I'm not yeah. a huge fan of game theory, but you know, I watch it sometimes. Yeah. Me neither. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it pissed me off when that guy started up film theory because I don't know. I just feel like when game critics and game commentators start commenting on film, it's like, this is a different branch where you need different, I don't know. Like it just, it's just, it's just weird. It feels like people can just do anything, you know, they don't need training and expertise and stuff. Um, I, I found that weird. I don't like that. Like when Angry Joe started reviewing Dolby theater, videos, like, fuck that, you know, it's got to yeah. know what he's talking about. Uh-huh. Um, and you don't need like paper qualifications or anything like Angry Joe, it's no qualification for studying and um, criticizing games, but it's something he's been into really, really into his whole life. So that is the equivalent of a qualification, right? Whereas it, he has the same level of interest in movies as any casual film goer, you know? So he just isn't yeah, qualified. He, make, he makes videos about like the most popular movies at the time. I think he, yeah. You know, Blair Witch. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Whereas like kind of like, taking, uh, if you look at the actual, you know, people who are taken seriously as film critics on the internet, like Red Letter Media and, um, and Nostalgia Critic, those guys actually went to yeah. university. And like uh, uh, Mike Staklasa, the guy who runs Red Letter Media, he has a qualification in film criticism and, fi- and media theory and shit. That he can be there taken seriously. There. He knows his shit. Yeah. Yeah, there is a guy on the film theorists. Um, his name's Kyle. He actually did go to film school and he actually makes videos okay. about filmmaking in the oh, style okay. of like every frame of your lessons from the screenplay. He actually did a video about um, male, male gays. So. Oh, really? That's interesting. I forget what the context was, but you know, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Mm. Well, we've been going for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit of- yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting though. Time has flown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this has really been a very enjoyable chat. Yeah, yeah, we've covered quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't have to do any preparation. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, especially because like uh, yeah. I've got the, and the other hangout coming up about Gamergate and me and H Bomber guy are like trying to do all this cramming because it's like such a topic that everyone expects you to be really book smart yeah. on and have your facts straight and all yeah. this shit. And we're going to get attacked yeah. as fuck if we don't have our shit. Yeah, I wanted to, I have an idea for a video on Gamergate that I'd want to do, but it would require just a ton of fact stuff. I mean, you, have you seen the video Gamergate in 60 Seconds? Is that a folding ideas video? No, that's... But it's basically um, Gamergate in 60 Seconds, but from the perspective of being pro-Gamergate. And right. so, you know, a lot of the facts and everything are not like, you know, it's like... You know, a lot of how Summers was wrong and, and she's conservative, but she's been a lifelong Democrat. And it's like, okay, well, whatever. I don't know. But basically what I would do is I'd say like... I have a yeah, in 60 Seconds where it's just like, here's what actually happened which i mean that sounds kind of pompous but like here's like the real facts behind gamergate just like in a 60 second video yeah See, we're, probably just so much we're doing with the hangout but we're gonna do it in like two or three hours <laughs> because yeah. there's so <laughs> much to unpack like for example you can make this statement that uh, gamergate isn't really about ethics and gaming journalism despite what they say however you also have to provide evidence for that and that takes a while mm-hmm. yeah rational wiki has a great series of articles I should read those, you in those yeah. situations. They're really yeah. good. They have a whole article just on like the main gamer gay claims, like their claim and then like the truth. Well, Fine. yeah, like um, I don't want to get into it too much because that's the subject of my next hangout. But one of yeah. the things that's the most obvious in terms of that being a bullshit narrative is that when you get ethics violations within gaming journalism that don't get, that get totally ignored by Gamergate, nobody talks about them. So, oh, it wasn't a woman doing it, so you don't yeah, care? Yeah, stuff like, that's like, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then they just kind of talk about really specific things. Like, yeah. oh, a woman made a game I don't like. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, evidence, you can that's provide evidence for that further by saying that um, the people who do actually care about ethics and gaming journalism, and that's what they focus on a lot of the time, they are the enemies of Gamergate. Jim Sterling, he, he calls out oh. ethics and gaming journalism all the time. But he is an Bless enemy Jim's of Gamergate, really. not part of it. Yeah. Bless his heart. He's a beautiful man. He is, he's, I'm a massive, massive fan of his, yeah. It's one of my dreams to get him in a hangout someday. Yeah. One of the goals that I set up this, my yeah. channel and within mind, you know. Him and a, a group of other people I'd love to get on. But, um, yeah. This like, was one of my goals, actually. So, he's one of my heroes, know, absolutely. Sorry about that. 
and um, yeah, and he he like his name appears on lists of the enemies of Gamergate, along with people like Movie Bob and stuff. You know, as SJW. You could not exactly. trust. But he is a guy who actually does the work that they claim to be doing, but he gets ignored and, and ostracized and, and insulted and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's just a hollow claim, really, when yeah. you get down to it. It's coming. Uh, you cut out there. Yeah, I just said he's like, he's getting a really, mm. really nice. Especially ever, ever since like that whole digital homicide thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. And went on for so long. Those guys are so, uh, yeah. Please yeah. Tell me anyway. Please tell me there's going to be in, um, the Sarkeesian effect section of this. Oh, H we'll cover guy. the Sarkeesian, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The, the Sarkeesian effect. The, the documentary. The, 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 the well, collection of you know, things. We'll, we'll probably talk about it, but it has been covered a lot. You know, H Bomber guy's takedown of it was great. Um, a lot of people have done. You know, um, you know, Kevin Logan did a series of good videos on that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it, I'm sure. But um, it does yeah, have and, the mindset. Yeah, and well, I mean, well, we can certainly touch on the violations of ethics in gaming journalism that happened in that documentary. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah literally in the documentary that's supposed to be about what the yeah. Anyway, yeah. hilarious. There's so much to take in on that whole issue too. There's a lot of facets, yeah. yeah. And one of I the assume, reasons I want to do a hangout about it is because it actually goes back further than most people realize. Um, Movie Bob started talking about it in yeah. early 2012. Yeah. You know, um, it's at least oh, yeah. been a fo the focus of a lot of um, social commentators talking about it for a long time. Mm. That was I when assume, I, I, assume you've seen, I assume you've seen. Why are you so angry? Uh, maybe. What is that? That's um, Innuendo Studios. It's like a six-part series on um, like Anita Sarkeesian and Gamergate and everything like that. Mm, right. Okay, I'll give it a watch. Yeah. Um, that was really the series of videos that just kind of made me realize, like, you know, Gamergate goes... There's a lot that, you know, we, there's a lot that we can't verify. There's a lot that we can't be sure of. There's a lot that we don't know how to feel about. Sure, yeah yeah and hence why it really needs its own um thing to be you know to talk about it and why i got those two guys because um h1 guy he doesn't feel totally um prepared yet to do that hangout and he's doing mm -hmm. research accordingly but the other guy i got char 42 is like that's his whole thing is yeah, um, he's been up on against that Game of and he is like the best at it that i know of so Definitely, he will be an asset. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I tried to that was just a little good trial as well. We couldn't track her down, unfortunately. You know, the, the woman who was in the debate with Sargon and totally crushed him about gaming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not only crushed him, but he had two guys with him as well, arguing on his side. It was three versus one, and she won. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. That seems to be, the common theme seems to be Sargon getting crushed in debates. Yeah, he's not good at them. Yeah. And yeah. the, the thing that amazes me is that, um, you know, he said he over-prepared his debate with Chrissy. That was the problem. Yeah, sure it was, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't be that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like I said before, I could have done a, good, a better job of his argument than he did. I don't even agree with it, you know. But yeah. you can at least make an argument on something. He didn't even try. As somebody who used to, yeah, as somebody who used to be an anti-feminist, I could probably do like retain enough of like what I thought at that time to be like, well, what are you, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you actually need to, well, from my point of view as a, as a feminist making an argument against feminism, I can do that because even though my argument wouldn't be compelling to me or to a lot of other people, you need to know shit about what you're criticizing in order to criticize it appropriately. You know, you actually have to know some shit about it and he doesn't know shit about it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the real problem is that the people on the other side of the aisle for the most part are not book smart. There's a couple of guys that I know who are book smart. There's a commenter of mine called Theo Davis, who's an anti-fem, who's very book smart out of feminism. I take that shit more seriously because those guys have actually taken the time and effort to read shit. He just takes it further, his disdain for certain feminist idea, uh, ideas much further than I do and writes off the whole movement, you know, because of those. Yeah. 
uh, which and not in a composition fallacy way in a in a tipping the scales just too far in terms of compromising the movement kind of way so not in a fallacious way either um you know like for example people might um people might write off islam as an ideal not like in an islamophobic way but in saying like i don't want to be a muslim because of the amount of certain things within the movement sort of tainting it um mm. Mm, mm. like in that kind of way which I, I i understand it's just i don't take it that far you know yeah academia has always been a tough thing for me like you know i'm a musician i'm not book read i don't consider myself to be a particular really i'm just my whole youtube channel is basically data led like yeah i'm just kind of i mostly exist to be entertaining and then my opinions on issues but requires a lot of you know thought and thinking things through it yeah like, oh this book i read one time has said all these things all these things that were said about it and maybe i should read more <laughs> I, I definitely should read more yeah you could say that about I anyone <laughs> about anything <laughs> people should um, always be reading more yeah yeah more. Uh, it's just, oh, yeah it's, it's just not my wheel mm. I, I think that's fine i mean that's why we have people like the both of you who are more academically minded that well, yeah and like you know like part of the reason i i do my stuff is because i think i probably have more time on my hands and ability to read things than some people do i can you know read a bunch of books on something and sort of compress knowledge in a more sort of digestible way that it's hard to not be reductionist mm -hmm. while doing that but it's possible you know and um so yeah, as long as you keep your stuff as you know pretty specific. So that's kind of yeah what I do. Yeah. Like I, I acknowledge that, and that's why. And, and it's not just yeah. time. Like uh, in order to read, say, like Nina Licky, you can try and just dive straight into reading her stuff with no prior knowledge of anything to do with feminist theory. But that is going to be tough. You are going to be lost. Like I compare it yeah. to um, you know the book A Clockwork Orange, not the no not the movie, but the novel. Reading yeah. that, you kind of have to like learn a new language because there's so much slang that it there's doesn't exist words. in our vernacular in that book. So you kind of there's so much, yeah. but you kind of have to like read a sort of sub language, like learn a sub language. And it's the same with academic work, particularly feminist theory. Yeah. There's so many terms and words and yeah. phrases and stuff, that, and you really sort of have to wrap your head around all that stuff to yeah. get um, your foot in the door ideologically. And so, so yeah, I, and I already have my foot in that door ideologically. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm an advantage there. Mm. Yeah, then there's those people who spend their entire life against awake, which seems like a really that seems like a really valuable pursuit, but just one that I cannot be like bothered. things that interest me to even think about diving into like, you know, I read the first page of that and I'm like, okay, what what are we doing? <laughs> what what's you say happening? Finnegan's Wake? I don't know anything about that. That's um, James I'm Joyce's sure. last book. Again. There's um, there's a free version of it online somewhere that you can read, and I'm pretty sure it's like got a glossary of all the terms. But like it, it doesn't even read. It's like a hodgepodge of vernacular words from like so many different like places in the world and language. It took James Joyce like ten years to write or something. Uh, it says here Crazy seventeen life. years. Yeah, seventeen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I underestimated. Um, yeah. like holy. Like, holy mackerel. Yeah. Girl, yeah. You know. <laughs> I admire it from afar. I really do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, that, like, I have a real respect for expertise when it comes to that stuff because, you know, I know, like, uh, how much it takes uh, and how difficult it is and arduous it is to dedicate your life to something and then to be, like, undermined and discounted by people who, who uh, like, have an anti-expertise sort of thread running through their worldview it really pisses me off you know it's like these people know their shit and they know it better than you you can't like you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah i find that, yeah. that, that disdain that for, does not for that, that does not happen to harder like more uh tangible subjects mm, mm, yeah like like you know you wouldn't you wouldn't fuck with a you know <laughs> always like, bring it back to my expertise but well, yeah, well, like Thunderfoot, for example, he's a chemist, you know. Yeah. yeah he probably knows his shit about chemistry. <laughs> I wouldn't but then, like, anytime he says something that isn't about chemistry. 
exactly because he's about as interdisciplinary as a mm, sea slug you know yeah. I've, been, yeah. uh, I've been told that i don't understand patriarchy right by people who yeah. probably yeah. don't understand patriarchy <laughs> yeah. or by do you mean by other feminists no 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 of course no 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 i mean the kind of the uh, the kinds of comments i always get the insults are always from anti-feminists i've never had a bunch of feminists come onto my channel and, and verbally assault me in the comments ever <laughs> okay yeah i mean there might be like one person you know but it's not like wall of it like i get when bearing fans come over and then i have to mm. end up you know blocking yeah. a bunch of people who want to call me a cunt um yeah. you know i don't get that from feminists so. yeah i did i didn't used to yeah uh, i'm probably gonna i'm probably gonna do a whole video where i just read hate comments yeah see that That's one thing about like my approach, what my approach to comments has been is, is in terms of like, I delete comments that I later wish that I'd like screen capped or something because they're like a really uh -huh. good example of like hate, a hate mob, you know, like, oh, my Black Lives Matter video just got so much racist shit on it. And I deleted all of it because I didn't want, because that video is fucking depressing and I didn't want people, you know, particularly black people to come onto the video and watch it and how fucking sad it is and then scroll down to the comments and get called nigger a bunch of times. You know, that's fucking horrible. So I deleted all that shit for that reason. But then I wish, you know, I wish I'd documented it a bit better mm, before that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that's worth doing. Um, yeah, as a practice, just because, again, um, you know, or people can delete their comments later, but then you have a record of the kind of the quality of comments coming from certain quarters. Yeah. Yeah. And what harassment exactly. looks like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the amazing thing is the alt right has infected YouTube to such a degree that you can click on like, just pick a random video with a, a black person giving a talk about anything, but especially about anything to do with race. Scroll down, like today I was watching a video, and you know, I started this hangout at 9 a.m., so I haven't been around. You know, my day wasn't long before this hangout. I watched uh, one video by Akala, who's a guy, uh, one of my, uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of, both musically and in terms of his uh, worldview, his, his, his views on things. He's a, a hero of mine. He was giving a talk on racism in the music industry. I scrolled down, the third comment to the top was talking about cultural Marxism. Of amazing. course. Yeah. It's like, it's just, it's like this is Marxists. part of our community. It's, it's just, this is how much the alt right has infected you. You yeah. pick a random video with a black person, cultural Marxist. It's just, just you know, everywhere, man. It is, man. It's, it's insane. Well, everywhere on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to the yeah, I mean, world, you're not going to hear anybody talking internet. about cultural Marxism. Nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Well, unless you like yeah. time travel back to you know, pre World War II Germany, in which case you hear the Nazis talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to. I want to do a hangout which talks about uh, people who claim to be egalitarians or anti-feminists, but egalitarians because they're not feminists. They're not. They don't. They you know, oppose feminism, and, but they're for equality, and their tendency yeah. to use really sexist language against men, and they're man-hating in the comments. Right. Yeah. yeah. The whole gender egalitarian thing, uh, yeah, I, I, it's been addressed pretty well, like Char42 addressed yeah. it in one of his videos. Um, I think, and I've talked about it in Hangouts before, you know, the fact that the mm -hmm. egalitarianism as a, as a practical working ideology in the real world kind of falls to bits um, in a non-level playing field society, um, and that you can't just mm -hmm. sort of push a theory onto like push that particular theoretical framework into a practical movement in a successful way yeah i remember i remember taking notes on the video where you were talking about that actually where yeah that was a good argument yeah yeah argument. like i used that clip from chaff 42 talking about it because he really nailed yeah. it um that was yeah. great yeah 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 he's awesome i think in my hangout the focus is going to be um, basically, the way they use a very patriarchal language, despite claiming to be egalitarian, things like mm. cock and beta male, mangina, yeah. all these things are basically informed yeah. by patriarchal worldview, which values some males over others and all males over women. And yeah. also the homophobia, the number of times you know, people homophobic slurs are left in the comments. And yet these are the people who say they are post-feminist because they're the real egalitarians. How, yeah. If you're not using it in your language, yeah. how can you say you are actually for gender equality? Yeah, exactly. They're just virtue yeah. signaling. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't exist. It's literally like 
I think that and cultural Marxism are the two things that liter- that buzzwords that just literally don't exist at all. There's not a yeah. thing. Doesn't exist. Like cuck, I guess I get I mean I made a video about pejorative. They're all pejoratives, yeah. but cuck, beta male, mandarin. Those yeah. are all things I guess I see what yeah. they're referring to. But I don't even see what cultural Marxist is supposed to be referring to because it doesn't yeah, exist. I- I have a whole series about these sorts of yeah, buzzwords. Yeah, watch them. Yeah, yeah. Did you know um, yeah. Demotivated did a series on buzzwords as well when he first started his channel? Yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're Maybe called, he'll give me some um, ideas. The, uh, if you go back to his first few videos, they're the ones that the, the video title starts with rant and then a number and then there's a buzzword like rant one. Uh, I have seen those. Yeah, I have seen those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said so he, that Alpha was... Alpha male, beta male, cultural libertarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I've kind of got right... There's block to be about cuck and beta, but I, I can't get past like the first line. So, <laughs> you know, I'm See, sure I'll me, get it someday. Just, to me, I just lump them in together and think of them as just basically interchangeable. Like SJW is interchangeable with feminist. It just is. Yeah, I try and I try and keep the series so that like like turn to their own episode. So like that's why episode five wound up being like, you know, socialist, communist, Marxist, everything in one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, let's yeah, just yeah. Get these out of the way. Yeah. Get that whole block of uh, us out of the way. Yeah. yeah, um, and I have a whole list. I, I'll, I'll probably go up to maybe like twelve episodes. I have no idea at this point. Yeah, mm. you know, I am. Um, I value that kind of work. I wouldn't do it myself because I don't feel the need to give any level of credence to buzzwords. Mm. You know. Um, yeah, I, I just I just like to document where they come from and just. Oh, like, I'm not saying other people shouldn't. I, like I said, it's important work to do. It's just I don't have yeah. the willpower to do it. You know, I need to know for myself. Like you know, if if people are going to use a term like Spengler, I need to know where that comes from. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It may or may not be applicable to these sorts of people who are having it used against them. You know. Yeah. Mm, mm. One thing I would um, possibly do. A, a video on is you know the term spurg which is a um, pejorative for, for autistic people i was just going to ask if that meant people yeah. with asperger's because it was the only association <laughs> i could see and i only saw it in like outright people damn you americans it's not asperger's it's asperger's yeah. there's no b in that word god damn it i hear americans say that all the time this is me off. sorry right. right. i'm right. such a yankee <laughs> I'm from New York too, so that makes it worse. Don't be in there. Anyway, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, a- a- ableist words I think um, deserve to have a light shined on them in particular because they are bigoted. You know, that's bigotry. Um, I mean, so is beta oh, and, yes. and all that. So that's bigoted as well. But yeah, um, yeah I think um, anti-mental illness buzzwords are sort of allowed. In, this, in a way that others aren't. Like feminists. I've seen feminists in, in social justice types calling people spurgs and stuff. That guy, um, uh, Samurai Goomba, often uses anti-autistic slurs in his videos. And he does fat shaming too, you know. Yeah. Um, but he's broadly a social justice type, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, the ones yeah. that are, are considered okay to, by at least some people on our side of the aisle, those are the ones I think really should have a light sign on especially because that shit needs to be weeded out, you know? And I know a lot of your like um, New Zealand crowd down there, um, you know, you, you like the word cunt is just embedded in well, your not, not even in a sexist way a lot of the time, I think. It's more, that's more a British Australian thing. I mean, yeah, it exists here to a degree as well, but it's less, less common. There's more people here who are uncomfortable with it. I personally never, ever use gendered slurs uh, on, in, yeah, for either gender, but that's just a personal choice. I'm not going to try and police other people's language. If you want to yeah. say that word, that's fine, but I don't. I keep, um, I keep catching myself saying, son of a bitch. That's a yeah. thing. Mm. Well, for me, it was actually the other way around was the, was the yeah. real stumbling block was using male ones, calling people dickheads and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I think that's equally bad um, and shouldn't be done. Um, and not because men are, you know, historically oppressed or anything, but because both of them, both types of gendered slurs reinforce gender roles and gender norms mm. equally. And so I'm yeah. against them equally. Yeah. Uh, so I go for words like asshole. You know, everybody's got an asshole. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm. 
opinions are like assholes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you have yeah. some other good alternatives here for people who want to, you know, improve. Like besides asshole, any other ones that you use on a regular basis that you can give some advice? <laughs> um, ass hat is another one. Ass hat. <laughs> yeah. 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 I even stopped using um douche because it does have an association with um women. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there actually aren't that many because I also avoid using ableist slurs. I have you. I do the one I often struggle with is crazy. I tend to use that when I shouldn't. Um, I don't think that's okay. But I do. I do do I, it. I, you know. Yeah, I say I say stupid and crazy and insane a lot. Yeah, insane I think is different because insane is a legal word. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's I different. Yeah, lunacy is a little different. Yeah, yep, I agree with that. Yep. I but, use yeah. stupid when someone lunatic. says something that makes my brain hurt. What's because that? Sorry? Like, yeah. I use stupid for like, uh, people who do or say things that make my brain hurt. Yeah. That when I think yeah. about your worldview and how that makes sense, I just like, I, it's just stupid. <laughs> mm -hmm. And look, my, my attitude towards ableism is that like, it's it's a natural like inevitable one that is going to be the last to change you know like if you look at the sort of uh, hierarchy order of things that have, have become unacceptable you know if racism was probably the first one then sexism then uh, homophobia then now we're getting into transphobia and i think ableism is going to be the last one because it's just it's embedded in culture to in the way that all those other things used to be you know now it is still to this day and, and you know it's those things are hard to get past they take time they take effort mm -hmm. it's not going to happen overnight and yeah. Um, yeah our generation is going to be like future generations are going to look back at the kinds of uh, ableist slurs we used and cringe um and you know i, I sort of acknowledge that and um you know so mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't i don't demonize people um, well, there are certain types of ableist slurs that are just not okay, like Spurg, for example. That's not okay. Yeah, Spurg is a little bit, like, that's a little that's on the targeted. Note. Yeah, yeah um, it's very targeted. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess another one would be, uh, I'm not a huge fan of calling people psychos or calling them sociopaths. Not for yeah, the same uh, reason, because that's armchair diagnosis and uh, it's anti-expert, you know, thinking that you can do the same thing as a clinical psychologist can do just because you read some shit on the internet or something. It's like, that's basically like 9-11 truth to me. You know, it's like, fuck the, all the engineers in the world. I did two, two hours of internet research, so I know better. You know, it's basically yeah. the same thing. It's like, um, you know, and anybody who, who does, who systematically does armchair diagnosis, like fuckers like Davis or Rini and shit, that, that, that's bullshit to me. So I, I also, even though I'm not a fan of psychopaths, you know, and I do think that there are uh, a lot of time there are people that are you are worthy of disparagement uh, to to throw around that word is 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 not okay in my opinion. I feel perfectly okay noting that the characteristics of narcissistic personality disorder map onto a lot of the behavior we see in Donald Trump in the last year and a half. <laughs> but what you do is. I would say what you're doing there is conflating two things, narcissism with narcissistic personality disorder, because no, no, narcissism is something that obviously Donald Trump has. He is definitely a narcissist, but to say oh, yeah. he has narcissistic personality disorder, you can't make that claim because any personality, all the personality disorders are very complicated to diagnose. Uh, I was talking to a CP once, a clinical psychologist, who said um, they wouldn't feel comfortable diagnosing any individual with any personality disorder without spending at least three or four hours with them in person, just the two of them talking, um, at a bare minimum. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's okay to call um, Donald Trump, a, a, to say he had NPD. The one person who I, I do... Sometimes no, 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 no. I didn't say I didn't say he had it. I say he is character. Well, his what he how he behaves matches on to the descriptions of the, the the ways that it is manifest. Yeah, but that's the thing though is that what mental disorders are in terms of the way they're viewed by like the writers of the DSM. That's what it is. Like they're called diagnostic criteria, so they're like a checklist. And if you go through and check off the checklist, they, that is what you're doing is diagnosing him with it. As long as you're checking off a certain number of checklists of check boxes on that list. Each personality disorder has a different number. I don't know what it is for MPD. Like, I'm just making shit up here. But say there's eight symptoms and say you have to have at least five of them. So if you're doing that and you're checking off five tick boxes, you are di armchair diagnosing them. So that is why I wouldn't do that. 
Um, and th- with one exception, the one exception is Elliot Roger because his therapist did float the idea that he might have had that. She didn't actually diagnose him with it, I think, but oh, I'm pretty sure she was a she. Um, she said that that was probably where it was going before he had uh, left therapy. Um, so I, I make an exception for him um, because there was a therapist involved to some extent. Hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, see, he, he fucked up by abandoning therapy. Yeah. It's, and that was his own fault. That's why I hate the, well, aside from the fact that he shot people, obviously, I hate him for the, <laughs> that reason because that, that, kind of, that kind of tips the scale a little bit. That's him. not okay. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to break into a sorority to kill a bunch of women uh, and just killing people in general, generally not a cool thing to do. But um, yeah. But don't I, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I also. I also think of him as a, as a shit bag for um, knowing there was something wrong with him, but just ignoring it and walking away from treatment possibilities because the thing he was getting at the time wasn't what he needed. So he just abandoned the whole idea of tr- treatment in the first, in the, you know, in general, which is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At that point, it's your own fault. You know how people, um, you, you can sometimes say a person with a mental disorder isn't really responsible for something they did because their brains work in a different way and, and they're not actually making choices necessarily in the same way a, a, um, a neuronormative person would. In that case, he made that choice. He made a choice to walk away from therapy and that is his decision and his fault. And that is what led to him killing a bunch of people and killing himself. So, mm. piece of shit. Yeah. As well as the people who defend him oh, or would God, excuse yeah. him. Yeah, like the him. MRA groups who say they stand with Brock Turner. You're pieces of shit. Oh, like, where you say you stand with Brock Turner, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. The, like, Ooh. I don't even... That, like, normally I want to inject nuance into everything. I don't care about nuance there. If you support Brock Turner for any reason, yeah, you are yeah. a piece of shit. Yeah. Have you guys seen the GoFundMe <laughs> video? Uh, yeah, maybe I actually There's know. There's a new one out about the Canadian some like meeting, um, and features a woman who's basically saying Brock Turner got an appropriate sentence. I was about to watch that, but then I had a hangout to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll watch it. I'm a big fan of her stuff, so. Mm. Yeah, go fam yourself is amazing. Yeah, she's cool. my hero. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great name for a channel. Yep, I'll do. Yeah, I've been trying to um, promote the sort of set of younger channels like yours, Tom, and um, Facts versus uh, anti feminist versus Facts, or fa- Facts versus anti feminists, and um, yeah. Athena of Athens, Go Fem Yourself, and uh, Danny Corks. Yeah, and didn't you just. Oh, Danny's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I so mirrored. Uh, another shout out video, video do you? Sorry? Say again? I didn't hear that. Is another, is another shout out video coming? 3,000, didn't you? Uh, I talk about uh, that whole thing in my uh, video I've got coming up soon. Hopefully, I'll be putting that out in the next day or so. It's pretty much yeah, we'll finished, see. but the work that's left to, it on, to do it on it, the, le- the work that is left to be done on it is kind of annoying, So, but I'll get to it over the next day or so. And yeah, I talk about what I was going to do for my 3,000 subs uh, celebration in that video at length. It was going to be a shout out to some of my commenters, not to other channels. Really, really bad timing, considering what happened. <laughs> yeah. um, um, by the way, I'm going to, well, I've just cleared 2,900. So I was planning, because I hadn't done anything from my 2,000 sub uh, milestone, to do um, a shout out video when I hit 3,000 of smaller channels. So you can look for that, um, hopefully in the next two or three months, however long it takes, I guess. Mm, mm. I'm about to hit 2,000, which blows my mind. Congrats. Yeah, man. <laughs> Me, though, you know what I mean? That kind of, like, I, I talk about this all the time, but I feel like I'm just kind of like a kid with opinions who just kind of and then everybody was like, oh, you're really cool. And I was like, huh? What? <laughs> my, original, my original run of videos was just a kind of an exercise to see kind of response type video. And I'm trying to stray away from it now because, you know, the whole shot reverse shot thing, it can get, not only can it get bored, boring but it'd be like you know you have to deal with everything that a person said and if you cut the, anything out you risk quote mining them so i like you know the format yeah, I... uh like 30 minute video um was like you know i was just kind of trying to jump around more and keep things interesting 
yeah you know not trying to go through and answer every question because we already have a collaboration where people are doing that led by christy so yeah 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 and like yeah i agree response videos if you do them right um well the way i do them, <laughs> it's i guess it's not okay for me to say the way i do them is to do them right but <laughs> i mean it is in my opinion that way i do them that way but um yeah in order to do them thoroughly and to do them in a way that people won't discount them just out of hand because of certain tactics you use like for example quote running. yeah um in order mm -hmm. to do them it, it takes a lot of work you have to be very thorough you have to be very careful and so i don't do them as much as i would like to because there's so much work and to be honest a lot of the ones i've been thinking of responding to recently are very long um there's a teal Dare video that's 34 minutes that would be a massive video yeah. for me um yeah you could break it down into like shorter videos like michael rollins does i considered that i actually with, uh, considered uh, that for the amid skeptic video but i was like no nah, i'm putting it out the 75 73 minutes or whatever it was yeah. fuck it and i just did it <laughs> and you never look back you know but yeah there, there probably is a limit to try that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think anything up to two yeah. hours, I think I'd put out as one video, though. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a response to uh, Sargon's correction or failed correction and explaining how to do a proper correction and talking about the study in a way that is understandable and why the critique mm -hmm. was valid. Yeah. So. Well, you know that there was a study that came out recently that was all about how that other study is bullshit, right? Did you read that? Uh, there was a, so there was the initial paper and then there was the response and that was the person I talked to when I did the interview on my channel, Stephen Pettigrew. Yeah. Yeah. Then they wrote a response to their their response, but right. then the, the 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 critique team wrote a response to that response to the response to the comment. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually four papers on there and it's a back and forth you know between them and that's one of the things that he said he got out of it was that this is a dialogue and that science is a process and you have to document your processes so people then can you know judge what's happened and decide what is right and to take forward. Um, and so that's part of the thing I want to explain in the video. <laughs> Did you see um, the last week tonight segment on scientific studies, Christy? I did not. I'm behind on my John Oliver. I've been traveling you a lot. Check that one out. Just um, go on to the last week tonight channel oh, yeah, and um, search scientific studies. That is one to watch because he, he talks about how uh, a vast amount of papers are not replicated even once and just sort of assumed to be accurate. It's a big, big problem, you know, and um, yeah, it's a very interesting, I didn't agree with everything he said in it, but I think it's a, an interesting, um, an interesting little video to watch. Yeah, there is a bias in publications. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's a bias in publications to new findings and just reconfirming old findings doesn't it's really get you up. Yeah. Right. And neither is a sort of, yeah, there's also like when you get, there's a whole journal now to like spurious correlations because it was so hard to get these technical things published. But yeah, there are human biases in the system of peer review that are go against what science should be. Yeah. And one of those would be, um, you know, incentivizing research to replicate, incentivizing researchers to replicate prior findings in the exactly. research, you know, new data um, and see if you can get the same results and publish that. So we like science, journals of replication, basically, like a whole yeah, journal yeah, yeah. just dedicated to replicated studies and make it be really citable. So it's very prestigious to replicate previous yeah. findings as opposed to always having to come up with something novel and new so yeah 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 i mean it won't shut up the detractors however much you replicate it because some of the uh, rate prevalence studies that people have a problem with have been replicated like but, uh, a lot of times but that doesn't seem to matter yeah that yeah me I, ideological oh well, yeah if you have a faith-based position that doesn't happen then the amount yeah. of evidence will get you to overcome that view like the Mary Koss study that anti-feminists love to, ba to bang on about, that's been replicated oh, yeah. like 60 times or something. It's like, when is it enough? It's ridiculous, you know? <laughs> well, again, they're, they're not understanding science. <laughs> yeah. mm. Anyway, this is what, been three hours, four, was it, is it four? It's seriously, four hours? We should probably stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like three in the morning for me here. Jesus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Down and now it's dark out. <laughs> yeah. I've never been on well, such a long hangout and it was so great. It was very yeah. good. Yep. Long overdue as well. 
Agreed. Yeah. I've been like, when's my turn? You know, congratulate you on my channel for how well you did in the Sargon debate as well. Like I said oh, before, I don't you. think I could have done as well as you did. It was great. Yeah. I actually well, put off you- watching that for quite a while because I don't know, like I just don't take Sargon seriously anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, but w- I, I watched it because H Bomber guy said I should, and um, well, he said everyone should in, yeah. a, in a video he did. It's like, all right, I'm gonna sit down and actually fucking watch this thing. And yeah, you na- you nailed it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think nailed the fact, it. I think the fact that we have like HD in the relevant study on our side, like that's a really damning piece of like you know, that's like against against them. That's pretty compelling. Mm-hmm. Like, I think. Yeah, and like uh, you know. And not even just in terms of the arguments he tried to use to rebut what you were saying or make arguments of his own. It was more his reactions when you were talking. And oh, yeah. That said, was I don't know. I don't care. That, I mean, that was ridiculous and just showed him up for yeah. being a fucking anti-academic, you know, waste of air. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. But, um, you know, his reaction when you were talking about the Oklahoma thing, I mean, that was disgusting. Fucking disgusting. Ugh. And I, maybe he wasn't snickering at the, you know, idea of rape or whatever, but, or maybe just you bringing it up and maybe he thought it was some kind of tactic or whatever, but his reaction there was, it was, it was just not okay. It felt like the equivalent of like a fifth grader hearing the word poop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like, it was like, oh, here she goes bringing up rape. It's like, yeah, of course, because it's a fucking important issue of, well, of course we're going to bring it up. You know, it's like a, it's like a um, global warming denier snickering when someone brings up rising, like climate, uh, rising carbon levels or something. It's like, yeah, that's a thing that they're going to, of course, they're going to talk about that. Yeah. It's a ridiculous reaction. Yeah. <sighs> um, the, the debate side, um, I was going to make a point and then you guys were talking so interestingly that I kind of forgot what it was. But <laughs> <laughs> if it, I'll try to bring it up. But I think it would um, just went back to that he didn't really take it. I think you know that seriously. And the other ah, now I remember, and I did. And one of the things that I did before the debate was talk to people who um, I felt had um, a different perspective or better ex- expertise in an area uh, about the debate. And one of those people were was you. And so my performance wasn't just me on my own sitting in a room. I talked to people. Um, in the YouTube f- feminist social justice community, whom I right. respected and benefited from our cooperation and those discussions when crafting my, you know, arguments um, and the cases that I decided to cite. So I wanted to also officially acknowledge everybody else, which I didn't do in the skeptic feminist video, but um, all the people that I talked to before the debate were immense help and thank you, each one of you. Yeah, there was like me and Kevin and Captain Andy and uh, at least a few others. Yeah. The motivator, I think, was in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Even though he's not a feminist, you know, we have to make <laughs> that clear. He'll be annoyed. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but no, he uh, he knows his stuff when it comes to certain social issues and whatnot. Hmm. Yeah. So it was a it was a win for not just me but for Team Social Justice Warriors. <laughs> yep, and even Saigon's fans had to admit he got crucified in that debate. Yeah, I left a comment yeah. on Thunderfoot's latest video and someone wrote back saying, oh, you should debate Thunderfoot and he won't, you won't be able to beat him like you did, so I got it. On the Thunderfoot video, it's hilarious. I was like, wow, even their side totally admits I kicked his ass. That's, yeah. Wow. Thunderfoot? Thunderfoot lost the, well, who was it he lost that debate? Eric Hovind or whatever? He got fucking crushed by a creation. Eric Hovind, yes. <laughs> Is everybody's right. reasoning valid? <laughs> no, bro. Just say no. Yeah. And just point at your head for several minutes. Just point yeah. at your head. <laughs> and just call him a retard a bunch of times. He's just an embarrassment. Oh. He is an embarrassment to the... Even set aside all the obvious misogyny in that. He is just an embarrassment to the atheist community in general. Mm-hmm. What a fucking joke. Yeah. Ugh. All right. On that note, I guess on that comedy note, <laughs> <laughs> yes, fuck you, Thunderfoot. All right, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks everyone for, for anyone who managed to get this far through the hangout, which I, maybe there isn't anyone, but. <laughs>
Anyway, thank you're you. a real trooper. If yeah, you've done yeah. That. You're very dedicated. <laughs> you saved all the yeah, comedy for last. <laughs> okay. Well, you, can skip over the, you can skip over the Buddhism and the guns and the everything like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank, you. Thunder, thank you both for coming along and uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to have this hangout. And thanks everyone who's viewed it. All right. Uh, um, uh, how do we sign off? Goodbye. <laughs> right. Yeah, hit the stop broadcasting button. Yeah, see ya. <laughs>